Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Merchandising Matters, or how to get the best of the online store experience online. I am Tim Callen from SLI Systems, and this is the most recent in our ongoing monthly series of webinars about the specific topics that are important to the success for online retailers and other e-commerce businesses. We always come to you every month with a particular area of, of a uh, special focus and with a particular guest who can help us with that, and we're very fortunate to have the same thing today as we always do. So what we want to cover today in terms of our agenda is we're going to go into some best practices in merchandising, in particular some of the e-commerce world, um, how data enters into that in particular, and then uh, how you can use your 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 content, your promotions, and your merchandising capabilities to really make your, your online selling as successful as you possibly can. And I am very fortunate today to be joined by, by Sri. And Sri just abbreviates his last name PV, but I think it's Patelavankutu. I almost got that right. Uh, welcome, Sri. Thanks, Tim, for the intro, and uh, you almost got it right. Yeah, it's uh, Pitella I, Venkata. I almost got it right. Sri tried to have mercy on me and make me not say his last name, and I tried to do it anyway, so that was 100% my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the intro, and hello, everybody. Yeah, so uh, Sri comes from us. Sri is from Dress Barn, where he is the, um, uh, an, in, a, a, an internet marketing manager, and uh, Sri has been with has been in the retail e-commerce space for more than four years. Joined Dress Barn about a year ago, and is doing um, e-commerce marketing there. Uh, Sri works closely with the site merchants to manage the site search, analytics, and personalization on the site. So his knowledge is extremely relevant to what we're talking about today. Once again, welcome, Sri. I'm glad you could join us. Thanks, so, um, so a little bit of housekeeping before we get going on things. Uh, uh, we do get a lot of people on these webinars, so everybody's muted. That way we don't have to hear the background noise in your office. But there is a Q&A. There is a questions interface right there. Feel free to type questions in, and I will see those questions. And I'll make sure that we get them answered either in the moment, if the moment allows, or uh, we might hold it till the end if that's something that makes more sense. But we do encourage those questions. We get a lot of those questions. We like those questions. So just put those in as they occur to you, and we will do our very best to make sure that all of those questions get answered. So with that, let's get going. So um, maybe I can frame the conversation a little, and then Sri and I, you and I can get into a little bit of back and forth. But just to frame the, the conversation for everybody, Shopping, even in the bricks and mortar world, is fundamentally different from how it was even 10 years ago, certainly more than that, in terms of the fact that there isn't really, at least in North America, there isn't really a, a, a physical business that isn't fundamentally affected by online and digital in a very basic way. And shoppers are really continuously engaged with what they're doing online and in the bricks and mortar store, and they all mix together. So we've, I just got a quote, a quote here from Deloitte where they're saying that, you know, 64% of the revenue that we get in brick and mortar stores is influenced by some form of online or mobile, what we would call a, a digital uh, uh, scenario. And I think that's very... Uh, 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 telling in terms of the importance of, of these digital channels because what it means is the digital channels are much bigger and more important than just what you, you do on those channels. So if I'm looking at the percentage of my sales that come in through my online store as opposed to my bricks and mortar store, I might feel that it's in the minority. But if you look at the fact that the bricks and mortar stores are really being enabled and serviced by the online channels, then you start taking a very different attitude toward these things. And you know, that's, that's a lot of what we're seeing with our own customers at SLI and what we're seeing in general is this, this sense that you can't really have these things be in a silo anymore. Uh, Sri, how does that compare to what you guys are, are, are seeing? 
Absolutely. You're uh, right on the point there. Um, a huge impact on our uh, retail stores. Uh, be, in fact, people are searching all the time for brick, brick and mortar locations on the web, and uh, we see a clear trend on how um, we are the influence of our digital channel has been impacting our retail market. So uh, you're right there. And I know you're going to share some detail with us later, so I don't want to jump the gun on that, but uh, I, I know that's coming up. Um, so, so, you know, omnichannel can mean a lot of things. And depending on what you're talking about, it might mean a different thing. But at least one of the important aspects of omnichannel is giving people a consistent experience. If I go and I interact with you on your website or on your app, or in a store, or I get an email from you, I want to see the same things, learn the same things, have the same products available, have the same offers and promotions. Uh, all of that uh, should, should be a single, unified, seamless experience for the customer. And a lot of what we are going to focus on today is some of the ways that you do that, some of the ways that you pull the best from one of those channels and put them into, into other channels. So, you know, we've got some examples here. It's things like having a mobile site that allows customers to reference products so I can go onto the, the web, the phone, and figure out what products are available to me, you know, without having to be sitting at my computer. It's things like, I know you guys have done things with tablets and stores, right, Sri? That, that has been... Absolutely. Been, yep. Absolutely. I mean, I, I was just going to preface the thing as if we do a promotion in the store, uh, how can we bring it back online? Of course, the way the customer navigates through the site is different uh, from what uh, in-store experience could be, but how can we bring it back to the mobile? How can we bring it back to our tablet experience? Even just making it an easy shopping experience for our customer when they come in store, how can we use the tablets? Um, you know, to search or search product or make it more easier for them to find what they're looking for. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not and then I think another thing you guys did, right, was just making sure that the in-store team had uh, uh, the right search available to them so that if something wasn't sitting on the shelf there, that you still had the the deep inventory of the website that was available to that person who was physically in the store shopping. Is that correct? Absolutely. So uh, what, the way we did this was uh, um, this was a pop-up store that we um, opened in New York City um, last April. And uh, we had a bunch of iPads where, you know, we had our website pulled up and uh, customers were coming in searching for product in the store. And uh, for, uh, you know, if there if there's a similar product item where the store associate wasn't able to find it um, find it, or if they were able to see that it wasn't uh, in the store anymore, it's not available in inventory. So they can search that product on the web, on our website in the store through an iPad and uh, bam, it just pulled up and the uh, customer was able to look at it. They can get a clear idea of how, uh, how the product would look with the detailed product description. So, um, that was a phenomenal help, and uh, the amount of exposure that we got through it, we are rolling that through across the chain, so through all the stores. So that that's a phenomenal finding in itself for us um, to have that sort of uh, easy way to implement search through our uh, in-store experience. And what a great example of what we were talking about before, which is to bring the power of and the, and the unique opportunities of, of your, your digital properties and allow them to actually make your bricks and mortar stores more effective. So, so one of the things, um, you know, I think today we're going to have a big focus on one of the things that people sometimes refer to as visual merchandising. And, and the idea in bricks and mortar stores is that you have a really strong immersive experience. People walk in there and you control their entire environment. So you, there's a really a lot you can do from an experiential perspective. And if people are staring at a, a small screen, you might think that you have less opportunity in that regard. Um, but we have seen that there's been a lot of carryover from, from these kind of older bricks and mortar offline experiences 
to the ideas that we can bring to online. And so in, in physical stores, in the bricks and mortar world, you, you, you know, you can do some things with merchandising, and I've kind of listed, listed them here. You can use it to increase traffic. You either have displays that bring people in off the street, or a lot of it's about moving people through the store. Let's get them to the corners. Let's bring them to the places we want to bring them to within the store. Uh, absolutely, you have a chance to increase sales, right? You can, you can merchandise in a way that causes people to, to notice something and ultimately, therefore, choose to buy it that they wouldn't have otherwise and it can be just a great experience, right? And this, this translates to customer loyalty. And I think we see all three of these same um, uh, uh, same kind of concepts in, in the online world. And again, we're kind, we've been kind of jumping the gun already, but we're gonna, th this is the stuff that we're going to discuss over the rest of this webinar. But before we do that, Sri, why don't you just take a minute and get everybody up to date. I'm sure we're all familiar with the Dress Barn brand with the many stores that you guys have, but why don't you just, just get everyone up to date on, on Dress Barn. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. So I'm very excited to share a story of, of Dress Barn with you today. Um, we're a brand that was founded in 1962 in Stanford, Connecticut. The mission behind the brand, uh, when the brand was founded to support and uh, the growing number of working women and professionals and uh, provide them with affordable clothing and uh, on part of style and design and designer brands. So um, that has been our goal. And um, we have uh, around 800 stores right now across the country. Uh, we have launched our e-commerce site uh, not too long ago, uh, actually. It's uh, been four years now. Um, uh, the biggest change that we went through with our site uh, being uh, – Modified in the sense we added a micro site just for our dresses. So we used to have dresses as part of our core functionality of the website. Now we sort of like figured out the biggest audience being dress customers. We kind of like created this customized experience where uh, we have our dresses broken down into a separate micro site, which we call Dress Bar, as you see on the screen. And uh, right. everything throughout our website, uh, Tim, if uh, you're very familiar with it, is supported by uh, SLI. We use SLI for our search, our category navigation pages, and um, you know many other things like we're going to talk a little bit about landing page creator and other things. So um, as an internal marketing manager here at Dressborn, I work closely with our site merchants who are uh, responsible for all the inventory that you see on the site and um, the category managers who also work with uh, site merchants on a regular basis. And uh, I manage the site search and uh, as part of the responsibility of working in the digital space is you cannot uh, just refrain yourself or restrain yourself to site search. So we kind of, I kind of have a heavy exposure working on the analytics side of the business as well. So kind of monitor and see how the site is performing after certain certain changes happen to the website. Uh, could be you know a tweak or a simple tweak, or could be even running an experiment or a test. So um, we, we recently started using uh, the the, the uh, it, back then it was the beta version of uh, landing page creator, um, which was uh, a tool provided by SLI back then, and uh, have seen tremendous help and uh, benefited a lot through using uh, the tool. So uh, I'm happy to be here and uh, speak a little bit about it. That's, thank you so much for being here. I think that's absolutely great. So why don't we go ahead and get into this, the in-store versus the online experience. So, um, and, and before, before, this is really for you to speak to, Sri, but, you know, one of the things, again, if I can just introduce, is um, one of the advantages. So we talk about these advantages you have with physical stores, which are many. But one of the advantages you have in online, at least, is this concept of expressed intent, that someone who comes to a website can very clearly indicate what they want. And they can do this through the use of the search box or through the way they navigate your site in a way that's much easier to pin down than what you can do in a physical store. And um, that winds up being a real asset to you guys, I think. Right, Sri? Sri, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, no no problem. Say, uh... It happens all the time. <laughs> Um, I was uh, I was just actually just started rattling. So, I, I mean, the way the digital world is shaping right now, I mean, 
everything is quantifiable. Everything that you do and interaction that happens on the website could be through any channel, you know, email, social, paid, or anything is quantifiable. And that has been our me mindset, our methodology on how we kind of tweak and use our search uh, data. So um, one of the key components that we use, besides the site, site, site search metrics that you're seeing on the slide, is uh, we use our, we use a, we are very regular and uh, hands-on with our on-page analytics and how a particular feature on our website is working. Could be search search box in this instance or our left navigation. How are people clicking through? How how are they navigating? Are they falling? You know, are they falling short? Is are they getting? Hung up somewhere on the on the pages. So, um, in terms of coming back to site search, uh, obviously, given that um, SLI itself has a reporting back, and we also use Google Analytics and other tools to like monitor how the site search is performing, and uh, any change that we can actually quantify it, and then see if it actually working, it is working for our benefit or not. So, um, that's one of the main main um, sort of like a analytics platform that we you kind of do on a weekly by weekly basis and um and I think we have an example here right so is this um, are we ready for this yeah absolutely so we want to talk okay. a little bit about so the example that we see on the screen is about the camera dress. So what happened here is when the customer, when we particularly launched this particular dress, um, there was a huge influx of how, you know, either customer coming through email or could be directly browser, uh, you know, browsing through our site and finding this very interesting. So the search volume went up and uh, that's when we sort of started looking at the trend. Since we get our weekly reports, we looked at we looked at this high jump in the search volume and uh, the conversion on this keyword, and then we identified this to be a particular product that we should go after. So we ended up creating a specific landing page and promoting it through our homepage. You know, using a you know you, you making essentially a, it as a spot on our homepage, and then monitoring it right, like whether the conversions are going up and how is the inventory looking on this particular product as we promote uh, as we started promoting it through email through home page through uh, through a certain um, landing page which was just talking you know more about this product more about the style where it actually originated from and everything so um, sort of like bringing all the pieces of the puzzle together um, on how we can streamline the flow and understand and take decisions based of data, which is uh, the search data in this case. So, um, right. yes. And then this, um, uh, I think you extended it just beyond, that was an example on the website, uh, but this is where you, you put it into uh, paid search, right? So, um, so, so again, moving forward and talking a little bit more about camera dress in this case. So, after our learning and finding out that hey, um, the product is you know has got a lot of traction, people are looking for you know looking to find and purchase this. Um, we brought it back to our marketing teams, and that's where we realized hey, there's a huge potential since it's not a high popular search volume term, uh, you know people specific to the industry and women who are interested in a particular style are looking at it, it was easy for us to find a decent amount, a decent price bid on our uh, product listing ad. So uh, that's where you see now we started highly bidding on this product and uh, drove a tremendous amount of conversions that we weren't expected. So that is just a little small siloed version <laughs> of uh, how we used that particular dress as search term. but. On a regular basis, doing it across multiple products and multiple categories have been a, a huge help for us. Right. Um, so, uh, and then, and then, um, finally, we can extend that to all kinds of programs, right? So, I think we've got an example of an email you did here. So, the same again, um, where uh, this is sort of like again bringing back the camera dress methodology, but this is more onto a Trend. So uh, you, we are very familiar these days that everyone in the market, in the retail industry, is popularly promoting the idea of trend and lookbooks. So um, one thing that we realized, the fact that when you see this, how the customer is searching through the site, how they're uh, performing, how they're performing on the paid channels or social, what they're interested to talk about, what they're looking for, 
we sort of started populating trends, started creating trends through our, our website. Could be through our top navigation, and uh, or could be through a uh, through a left navigation where we promote a particular trend. In this case, it was a tie dye, which we uh, realized that hey, let's do a promotional email, create a trend landing page to match the email. So we're speaking the same lingo. Um, again, right. very simple to do, very easy. Um, just you know customized banner to speak to the same promo, same uh, pricing. And the uh, most important key, I think the key for us as a brand, which uh, which is, uh, which has a huge customer sort of like presence, we want to monitor the inventory level too, right? So depending on the inventory level of that particular product, we either make that landing page, at, you know, an automated one, or if we're seeing that the product is selling out, we want to make it up manual one where we push the sold out items to the bottom and then we start promoting products which we want we see more in the more in in store more more inventory on the product on, on our side so um so again right. uh, the and, same methodology and you can update sold. you can update that landing page like the someone might have gotten this email and they don't open it until the next day but when they do and they go to the landing page they're going to see the current results that are appropriate based on these decisions that you guys are making in real time. Absolutely. And this is all done through the feed. So it's so simple and so automated that, you know, nothing much has to be done through our it's, – it's all like a nicely greased – engine which runs very smooth so uh, making sure that the feed works well and, the, and you know, we populate all the inventory counts to SLI on a daily basis so um, and the feed is indexed every hour so we know like what's selling out and what's not so um, so yeah. sort of like speaking to the same thing that you're talking about Tim. Yeah and part of what I love about this campaign in particular and we're going to be touching this again is how just how perfectly integrated it is, right? It's all appropriate. When I come in, I start with this tie-dye program. It's promoting tie-dye to me. And as I move through, I, I'm always shown things that are appropriate to this buying mode that I'm in right now, that, that, that you keep the whole thing pure and complete the whole way. And, and I, 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 I love that. I think that's great. Um, so, the most phenomenal thing, Tim, for me has been the SEO value to these landing pages, right? So not just creating a page and throwing it out there, but, you know, the customization feature that you guys provide us has been a good value because they're indexable by search engine. You can put it up on the on the web, and then you can tweak the keywords and meta description behind it to match um, the you know match the popularity out of this uh, tie dye keyword that is out on Google or Bing or any other search you want right. to go after. So. Right, and you kind of get into this idea of curated collections, right? Which so here we've got a picture of this here, right? Um, this is this is actually a, a shot from one of your stores, and when I look at this here, this clearly is a curated collection. It all goes together. Um, if Hypothetically, if I were shopping for dresses, which I don't do a lot of, but let's pretend, then I could have a high degree of confidence that I could come in here and anything from this section is going to work together, that it's going to fit and it's going to, 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 to be, be uh, you know, the, the, the same set of uh, matching materials for the same woman. And so you can sort of take those same ideas and you can apply them in the online world. Right, um, and and some of that is about making discovery easy, I believe. Right, and so if we look back at this picture here, it's discoverable. I can come in and I can say these are the things I want, and they fit together, and I can put them in together. Um, and you guys do the same thing in in in, uh, in online, right, Sri? It's 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 all about the trends again. Like what we find yeah, uh, from the behavior from a behavior of an in-store customer is that we want to. Oh, I hope we didn't know Sri. Hello. Are you on mute, my friend? No. Uh, so so um, I will keep talking in the meantime. The uh, Hello? We, we definitely have lost your sound. All right. Well, we'll keep going. So um, some of the things that we see here are that, uh, uh, you know, you've probably all read these words by now, I think. Um, um, so there's no point in me rereading these words. But this is, you know, one of the things where 
you know, Dress Barn and other online retailers take these ideas and we try to try to carry them across. So for instance, one of the ways we can do this is make sure that your mobile devices are very discovery friendly, right? And mobile devices are different in certain ways when people are on mobile devices, it's a small form factor. Uh, precision is limited by the size of your fingertip, which is much larger than a mouse pointer. Uh, people in mobile devices, they tend to be slower to load. They tend to be very mission-oriented. Uh, you get less of this kind of shopping for entertainment and more about shopping to get a job done. Um, if you're out, you're on there to go, you're in the store, you're around, and you're trying to figure out what can I get. Oftentimes it's I'm standing in the mall and I want to know what store at the mall can give me what I want. So I'm going to get and I'm going to find it and I'm going to walk over there and get it. And so we have to have an experience that's very appropriate for that. So it's things like easy refinements, it's things like good search, it's things like paying attention to the physical needs of the mobile device. And all of what all of this does is it makes discovery easy. And I do have some people trying to try to find Sri and bring them back. Um, in the meantime, Tim, you there? Uh, one of the big things that we've seen is that it's important to present people with the results that they're, they're most likely to be looking for very quickly, basically to show the best products first. So for instance, um, this, is a, this is a screen cap from Dress Barn, and the most popular dresses for this search, which looks like black dress to me, the most popular dresses for this search are also the ones that are there on the top. So that it's very, very likely that somebody will find a product that they will be happy with and they'll be able to take and move forward. And in this case, we see that the first five results, um, and this is, this is uh, uh, a good uh, representative sample for what we see kind of across our customer base, in the case of Dress Barn, roughly 70% of searchers click on something that is in those first five results. So Dress Barn is very successful in finding products that people are happy with and presenting them to, to people in a way where they can take it and, and move forward there um, very quickly um, and very successfully. And uh, uh, we'll probably return when we get Sri back. I'll ask him some specific questions about his use of Tim, search. can you hear me? But for the moment, why don't we move ahead? Um, and so another thing that we see that's the best practice among our retailers is to try to help people navigate through, again, this is kind of the discoverability idea, to try to get people to navigate through um, very easily. So in this case, Anderson Doors and Windows, another one of our customers, has this very clear, obvious visual set of cues. Uh, everyone else can hear three except for me, I'm being told. Well, how about them apples? So um, we're going to back up. That is a new one for me. So we're going to back up, and what I'm going to do is, I'm sorry, Sri, I've been talking right all over you. That's horrible. Um, I don't know why I can't hear you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, why don't we move back to this slide right here and maybe, maybe, or maybe I'll go back a step further. Why don't I go back to this slide right here? Why don't you talk to us about mobile friendly experiences and I'm going to get somebody to wave at me when it's time to move to the next slide. Take it away, Sri. Um, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> I don't know why I was unable to. Um, I was able to hear you though. So I would just want to, so I think you already kind of like walked us, kind of like gave us a walkthrough on how we do the mobile experience. Sort of like refine, one of the examples that we want to prompt here, or I want to prompt to this um, middle picture that you guys see is uh, the search box. So um, realizing that the search performs way higher on our site compared to uh, what a regular visitor performs. Search visitor perform performance is obviously higher. So um, we moved into a mindset where we want to like fix our search box or make it real, make it 100%, you know, visible for all the customers throughout their pay, throughout their search, throughout their session. So um, before we used to have a magnifying glass where we used to click and then that used to expand out, we kind of identified that, hey, um, realizing the conversion has been so high, let's do this. And uh, then the process came where we want to make the entire experience easier. So that's where we kind of started doing the text navigation on our homepage where customers complete, uh, 
instead of going in and navigating or clicking on, they call it the hamburger uh, on the left navigation. So uh, instead of clicking and asking them to perform the action, we kind of prompt them through that. So they click and land on that. And then then if they want to refine a particular refinement, so giving them the option to easily refine and dynamically making it um, easier for our customers to sort. Of course, um, it's a huge help to have um, SLI build this out, you know, to meet our needs and requirements. So um, the refinement functionality has been a f- tremendous help, and we've seen huge benefit or huge increase in our uh, the way the cus- the website, the mobile website is performed. So uh, sort of like the discovery path, constantly tweaking it to make it easier for a customer, identifying wh- where we are falling short of, and, uh, you know, tweaking it and making it better. So uh, moving on to the next slide, I wanted to talk about um, the ideology of how we do our uh, category navigation pages. In this example, do I uh, hear Tim on this? Hey, Sharia, I'm back on somebody's cell phone. So uh, my my apologies for that. I'm glad you held down the fort. Uh, Don't let me interrupt you. Keep going. Are we on the right slide? Yeah, so so talking about online, again, yeah, no problem, Tim. So we're just talking about the search behavior on one of our category pages. So this, this, this example probably cannot be applied to all the categories. This is to a pot, popular collection that we have. Um, so this, this, this category, Tim, is a very popular one. So what we do here, what, what are you seeing here is, the top three columns are the mostly clicked. If you looked at if you look at any heat map out there in the industry, you'll see that the it gets darker and people are clicking on the top three rows more than they click on the you know as we as we as we move below the fold. So identifying that and then sorting out since this is our popular category, keeping a close eye, we kind of started realizing that the tra- we have to closely monitor the first two first two rows. So we tweak those products uh, based on, again, the click-throughs, based on how the, they're performing on, on a regular basis, on how the customer is searching, and what's the conversion rate for that particular search term. So we went after all of that, and then for this particular category, we've seen a huge development just manually going in and tuning the results, right? Not just letting the, uh, sort of like not letting the algorithm define it because we know that this product sells out in a day. And uh, typically, the algorithm takes around two days to like start kicking, you know, and churning. So, again, that doesn't apply to all the products, but in this particular one, since it was a hot item, we went after that. So, again, discovering and making it easier for ourselves and helping ourselves, uh, you know, promote a particular item we want to. So, um, so you know, using that, you're doing that in an automated way using your feed. Um, what would be involved if you guys had to maintain that? level of, of currency in terms of inventory manually. Is that something you could ever accomplish? No, that's the reason we moved to SLI. <laughs> we, we, we can never support our, uh, you know, something around that since we have a huge, huge uh, collection of SKUs. It's just this particular collection, which was very small, which was very hot, and uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, this and there's not a lot of product around this, right? Probably it was uh, right. two pages worth of product, and we wanted to kind of push it out in a day since we wanted, we were heavily promoting it through our pop-up message, uh, store message. We were promoting it through email. We were promoting it through uh, PPC, uh, through our affiliate channel. So it was just a push, and it was just that that's the reason be, behind talking about this example. So uh, one thing... Um uh, so let's skip through the next couple slides because I think I said something and Upton flustering about them already, and um, get to this because I think I think this is where we get to some of the neat stuff you guys are doing. Right? Is uh, uh, again in the spirit of making discovery easy, uh, you've you've got these um, this pretty accomplished use of redirects to send people to the places that you you want to take them. Uh, so. Tell us a little bit about that. So, so just kind of like going back a little bit and talking about the mindset mm-hmm. and the methodology and how things work. Um, we have our uh, weekly report, which comes out from SLI. So, I 
think it's scheduled for a Sunday. So when it comes out with top performing keywords, we'll pull that list out, uh, we sort it out, and then we say, hey, these are the top 50, typically 100 keywords that we want to go after and see how they're performing. So uh, redirects are one of the major, major elements on how we look at the business since it's uh, some since we are very seasonal so we want to make sure that hey if customers are sort of like searching for a particular product before uh, the season begins and uh, there's a huge influx or huge demand how can we sort of like promote other products right or other items that we want to go right. we want to we want to push which are very similar to the item if it, that if it isn't in the warehouse yet so if that particular product yeah. is in the warehouse so so uh, redirects in this case come behind that methodology where we look at the keywords, we sort it out, and then say, hey, um, are we sending them to the right, right? Uh, for instance, scarf? Uh, we right. have a whole, whole scarf collection, and um, we realize that there's so many different variations how people search a scarf. And uh, um, until we started, we did, we did not realize this until we started looking at the keyword list. So we tweaked it, we pulled out the similar, familiar uh, keywords, misspellings, and then started applying the redirect mindset to it. So why don't we just skip ahead to, oh, you know what, that's our poll, but we're going to go back to our poll. Why don't we skip ahead to a, uh, uh, an example of kind of what you're talking about here. So here we have, I think this is an example, it's not scarf, but the same idea, right, Sri? Absolutely. This is... Uh, so again, coming back to the ease that we have started seeing with uh, using the landing page creator and uh, SLI functionalities or tools that we get as part of our um, part of our uh, build is that um, creating trends. Um, in this in this particular case, we provide and serve uh, you know Missy Plus and Petite customer and uh, to promote all the product on a one single page was the biggest hurdle for us. We never had that functionality available until recently, uh, thanks to Landing Page Creator. So uh, so just getting that under one umbrella and uh, it, it right. has helped us promoting it through uh, through PPC. In this case, we, we also promote that page or that URL across our affiliate channel and uh, sort of like we call them bands, you know, where the first band is Missy product and the second band is plus and then petite and then um, again we we let the learning algorithm do its uh, learning search do its uh, magic, right? So uh, if the customer is clicking on a petite product higher than a plus product, which is which is how we envisioned, we want the product up. So uh, so we just having that functionality to merge all these together was an amazing feature, and um, uh, that's the mindset behind the whole curated uh, sort of customer um, setup. Right, and so the curated displays, you know, are, are one of the big things you were talking about, uh, and and then and then connected to that, the next thing that um, the next slide actually is related to this too, right? Because what we see here is your it gives you control over what products you promote and how you promote it. And I think you were talking about this a bit earlier. Yeah. The the way that um, we call them, if you if you look at it, there's a new product on the site, which is uh, which we obviously want to highlight through using that specific badge, a specific badger on the product. We call we call it new arrival, or uh, if there's a top rated product, which has been amazingly appreciated by a customer, having creating that badge, which would highlight the product and then promoting it. On the page, right? So, um, right. so we so seeing how the customer is actually clicking through. If the customer is not clicking through, again, going back to our analytics and saying, hey, where do we see the where do we see that we're missing on the missing the click? And uh, identifying that, and then understanding what the what we can do to promote the product. You know, either adding that to a particular trend shop or doing a particular email or promoting it through our affiliate network. So, what can we do? So. Constantly moving it through uh, all those pipes. Right. Cool. So now, so that's that's part of the in-store experience. Um, another thing that we see in the world of bricks and mortar 
is there's a sense of grouping things together, right? You go to a section and you can find things that come together in the section. And again, I think you guys have your, your online version of the same thing, and this ties back to sort of the tie-dye experience that we had earlier. Coming back to the tie-dye experience, we, we, we actually ha adjusted our top map, Tim, based around the search, right? So we added trends to our top nav, and the version of the page that you see on the left is the trends page where you can, where it's just not talking about tie-dye, but other different collections there. So tie-dye is an example we're focusing on here where we created a, we created a category on the top nav called trends, and then they land on the page, and then they see tie-dye, and they click on it, and they land on a specific landing page created for tie-dye with the banner, so, you know, again, reemphasizing on the same messaging. If in this banner, obviously, you don't see a promo, but when, you know, when it went on a promo, we had the promo messaging clearly on, as a global header. And uh, then promoting the product, again, the first three rows, uh, it really depends on the amount of uh, inventory we have. We generally, we, we rather prefer the learning search to the, you know, magic here and land the page and create the page and just optimize it automatically. So um, the first three, the four columns that you see are products that we, I'd excuse that we want to push as part of this collection, right? So um, that's, the, that's the grouping mindset that we have right now around how we promote our trends. Yeah, and so I got a question here. Um, someone was asking, what level of control do you have over what items appear on the landing page? I would say 100% control. <laughs> uh, yeah. You you could uh, not just not just it's as simple as you know picking up the SKU and typing it into one of your tuning um, it's it's a tuning search box and the SKU will populate right so you can pick the SKU and okay. then you can just pull and pull it into the promote promote category or if you want to demote which is a very common thing if the product is not performing as we want to we want to demote it so I think it's very flexible to an extent that you have. Uh, to an extent that you want to go in and, you know, whether you want to really put your time behind, you know, a particular product, you want to go all the way, you know, a particular trend, you can do you can do anything, but uh, you can do everything, I would say. With, uh, with, and then uh, connected the, uh, to that, another question that I got connected to that here was, what, what, what are your criteria for deciding what are the best products to be putting up? Is it, is it just the ones that are most relevant, or are there other criteria that, that maybe dominate over that? Uh, mostly the criteria is defined by our site merchants um, based on the trends that they see. Uh, obviously, the print speaks to it. Obviously, the uh, the designer speaks to it. There's also a lot of designer collections that we have, styles that we have. So that's one of the criteria that we go after. Uh, inventory speaks to it. If you're doing a particular, you know, sale brom uh, sale product, you know, could be a buy one get one. We want to have that created under one particular page. Um, so. Uh, Again, that's one side of looking at things. We can go back to marketing. If a, if an email is out out uh, to our customers, if we want to do any specific pages around that, uh, I remember doing one thing uh, around Thanksgiving. So we created a page specifically speaking about Thanksgiving and how uh, their products below 50, below 30, below 20. So um, sort of, you know, again, deciding what your need is, what your goal is, and uh, what you want to achieve, and then going after the, creating pages around that. Right. So um, one of the other concepts that we have in the bricks and mortar world that I, I think is relevant here is the idea of sort of having a, a, a store flow. So there's a lot of uh, attention paid to physical stores about how you move through the store, and that's considered to be very important. And I think you have a similar philosophy as well, don't you? Absolutely. Um, just just speaking about a little bit of store flow, I just want to talk about, I think we've been talking about search a lot more. Um, but uh, as part of my role and as part of the things that we do, the way the things we do here, we kind of focus a lot more on um, product recommendations and uh, mm -hmm. so that, uh, so that you know, if it, we all know in today's world, customer is not just coming through homepage, right, Tim? So they're coming through email, they're coming through your category pages, they're directly landing on a bookmarked product detail page. So, sort of like 
how can we make it better? How can we promote cross-sell, upsell products? So one of those things is using the recommendation functionality that we have on our web pages right now, our product detail page. And, uh, and another thing also we want to talk about a little bit about the dynamic banners on how we kind of provide relevant banners and promote them. So on a page, if you look, um, the highlighted piece that uh, on the on the presentation is the product recommendation on right right, right rail right we call them the right hand right, right. hand rail and uh, yeah. in this particular thing it's kind of categorized by dress type so um, if we want to increase the sort of AOV and uh, you know cross sell more dresses we promote dresses right or if we want to sell a sell a particular outfit we make it a customized recommendation so having all that flexibility and designing the flow to match so since in store experience where customer goes in and they talk to a sales associate and they kind of like hey here's an outfit that you you know might go well with you your uh, particular need we we want to speak to that to a customer so providing that ease on the website is what we're trying to trying to slowly achieve and trying to slowly get to so so great now another thing that we get in the bricks and mortar world again is that you have a chance merchandising is big in terms of things like promotions sales specials things along those lines and once again when we get get to the online world you have the exact same uh, uh, set of capabilities that are available to you, you really try to emulate that. <laughs> that's per, that, that's, I think uh, we spoke a little bit about this before on, uh, on a particular sense. Those, those things we refer to badges internally are uh, uh -huh. obviously, we, they're not manually done. These are all automated thanks to the feed. Um, any product that hits our um, feed, you know, say in the 24 hour time frame for the first time the batch pops up saying new arrival and then we highlight that product and um, obviously again learning search is going to do whatever it's supposed to and then it ranks it based on the customer's preferences right so that's the new yeah. arrival piece of methodology and then also we do the top rated and best sellers based on um, right. how we want to promote it and then you have this whole surrounding set of digital assets and 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 campaigns to to support and 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 promote these ideas. So uh, speaking a little bit about this digital assets, obviously we are moving towards everybody in the industry is moving towards content and uh, curated content. So um, around that, we have a lot of collaborations with designers now. So um, which we are offering um, uh, sort of like editorial copy around it. So creating those pages with designer description or collection of dresses as you know accessories or shoe or whatever particular um, outfit that we want to promote and um, sort of building those curated campaigns and then promoting them using you know once they click through that co content obviously we'll have a little bit of copy and then you know promoting the product which we want to promote as an outfit or whatever we we pick to be the best way to approach this and then landing them on the particular product set and um these the page that you see on the right right hand side right right side is through landing page right. Creator, right so where you have the functionality okay. to upload all the banners fine uh, yeah so just was going to say add to you know you can put in a banner and you can also upload a bunch of products below the banner right so in this case we are just pulling all the banners so uh, you know you see the sales me sale messaging, and then also you can see a little bit about the product below it. But uh, uh, so uh, from the curated campaigns, mostly what we try to achieve is sort of like an awareness where the customer understands where the product is coming from, the designer mindset behind it, and um, then landing them onto a particular page with that banner and uh, the product. And uh, and you guys find that this is, I guess, I think I know the answer to this, but you guys find that this is a, an effective technique. You you this does drive sales of incremental sales of these products and the products you're trying to drive. So so the 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 the, the shopper that we're going after, Tim, it, it, we want to kind of like focus not just promoting product. We also want to want them to understand the 
the what the brand has to offer how how uh, what the what the pro- what the mindset was behind building that product right so um so it has done amazingly obviously for sales but also we kind of like get a lot of leverage from SEO perspective where all this copy becomes so rich and uh having that the the ease to kind of add all this to Google and uh, create a site map if you want to create those keywords and meta descriptions has uh helped not to generate just organic traffic uh so so building all the new customers who are just searching for a specific keyword you know uh, obviously we are doing right. good we, we want to promote this for the existing customer but also creating that awareness and acquiring and you know building our acquisition sort of like funnel using the copy and so that's a fantastic point to make and I'm glad you made it right it's not just about making a sale right now it's really about creating an online selling experience that is going to ultimately result in a loyal customer who likes Dress Barn, likes your products, likes your service, and wants to come back and, and have a lifelong relationship with, with the retailer. Is that correct? I, absolutely. I mean, as we spoke a little bit about what how Deloitte sort of spoke a little bit about how, you know, 64 Four percent of the you know dollar is being influenced by digital. We want to make sure how we can make it you know easier and affordable, right? So you know promoting it through so the copy you know we also have the functionality where a customer can sign up and share and you know through all these different social media channels, Facebook. So getting all that free you know free publicity, a free advertising. Since the product uh, product speaks for itself, so uh, just uh, so uh, adding the content as a leverage to it. Gosh, Sri, I, I think I I feel like we we have only scratched the surface. Like probably you've got another webinar in you. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time, and we did eat some time up a little bit of time up with some technical problems. So my apologies for that too. But I think I think we're going to have to have to move forward on wrapping things up. So let me take one minute and just let everybody on the webinar know that our upcoming North American uh, East Coast version of our conference, our annual user conference, SLI Connect, is coming up in New York City on September 24th at Carnegie Hall. This is where e-commerce thought leaders get together and discuss exactly the kind of thing that we're talking about today. And um, this is a a one-day jam-packed event in New York City. If you are interested in seeing whether or not you qualify for a delegate pass, please feel free to go go to www.soiconnect.com. You can learn all about it. And um, and, uh, you especially want to come for two reasons. Number one is we will not have problems where we can't hear each other. And number two is that Sri will be joining us and will be speaking. So I'll have more of a chance to hear these really good insights from somebody who, who has, to, has to accomplish these tasks all day, every day. So I just want to pitch that real quick. Um, there are some resources in your resource list in your interface. Uh, one of them is a link to soiconnect.com. You can just link on it there to learn about the series and, and apply for a pass. And then the other thing is that we do have a white paper on using site search data to improve merchandising, which is directly relevant to what we're talking about today. So let's fish in a couple questions. In the remaining time we have left, I was fielding questions as we went along. So in that regard, we're kind of doing okay. Um, and um, for uh, there was a question about the new arrival badges, if you want to jump back to that real quick, Sri. Someone's trying to say, how do I know? So I understand that you have these badges and it's a digital asset and you, you superimpose it on the image, but how do you know that this is a new arrival? Like, how is that accomplished? So uh, we sort of have a rule in place. Um, in our case, it's it's the rule when a product hits our uh, feed, so uh, which you haven't seen, or a SKU, particular SKU hits our feed, right? So in a 24-hour time frame. So right. you can tweak that rule uh, to be, you know, to make it, an hour, you can make it 16 hours. 24 is what we came at, came with, came up with. So it's it's automated. So uh, you can you know SLI does it for you. It does the you know you just have to send them the feed on a daily basis on a you know bi week bi daily basis. However, you pick the most easiest way for you to do that. 
And so you guys decided that 24 hours was a good time period to say something was a new arrival. But I guess that might vary from retailer to retailer, right? So everybody sort of has to figure out what makes sense for them. Absolutely. Uh, I've even heard that uh, people do it four days. So, uh, you know, if the product is very scarce and the inventory is low, if you want to put a new arrival badge and it sells out right away, you want to be careful about that. So, yeah, totally, based on your business need and what you have in stock. All right, that makes great. I had another question here that I thought was very insightful I wanted to ask you. So you talked early on, you talked about being very, very, very data-driven. Just off the top of your head, what are some of the most important uh, reports or analytics that you're looking at to manage your business? Like if you just thought, what are the key things that you pay attention to, what are they? So um, we use a wide variety of tools to do this. And in terms of reports, obviously the the primary report that we sort of build everything around for search specifically is the SOI report that we get on a weekly basis, right? So which has a list of keywords, how the uh, number of clicks that we got on that week. Um, that's one of the reports that I look at. Uh, other reports that I do look at on a daily basis are uh, the site search report on uh, how that search, how site search has performed for us on a daily basis, um, which comes through Google, uh, Google Analytics, um, if you guys have that in place. And uh, another one uh, through Omniture is to uh, using uh, the product performance report as well. So those are the three reports that I look on for the site search perspective from the merchandising perspective. Uh, and um, to opt, uh, that's the primary. That's sort of like the primary first reports that we use to tweak our right. searches. Once they're done, we go go after the conversion reports, right? So it could be uh, your typical um, heat map on page analytics report, which is a, again a free um, GA you know report that you can pull up and um, yeah. Great, Sri. Thank you so much. We are out of time. You've been a great guest. I cannot wait to have you presenting at SLI Connect because I know you have just a lot of good things to talk about. And um, 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 congratulations on your cool under fire when we were having technical problems. I think you did really well. So thanks to everybody for joining us. And this will be available on demand if you want to watch it again. Make sure you sign up for SLI Connect. Make sure you, you come to our next monthly webinar, which will be coming in another month. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.